thank you guys very much for taking the time to do this interview. Thank you for having us, man. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I'm very glad to be able to do it and uh, be able to talk about this awesome new album, Driven to Madness. Uh, I've gotten the chance to be able to check this album out uh, this week, and I just really love where you guys are at now here in 2022. I just, everything just feels right on this album. I mean, no matter how heavy it gets, no matter how uh, more electronic it gets, I mean, just like everything that goes into this just feels like it's the right amount of everything, and it's it's great to hear that in 2022. Thanks, man. Oh, thank you. Oh, not a problem. So with that in mind, I mean, what was it like to start writing for this album? Uh, well, the last EP we put out <clears throat> was what, Justin, 2020, our Blackout EP. Two years ago this month, actually, yeah. Yeah, so we went, toured for that uh, in, in Europe and got back. And obviously, you know, what happened happened. The world shut down. So we had quite a bit of time to uh, start writing and... Um, I feel like this actually was the longest time effort we put into writing anything um, because we had so much time. So we just really yeah, nitpick I, I everything. Would say that, yeah. Um, yeah, so we just really had a lot of time to nitpick everything and just, you know, where we were at the time with, you know, the style we wanted to kind of incorporate with the new record. So, yeah, I feel like this record really has like all the elements of kind of what we're known for. Um, with like more intensity and more energy you know yeah that was exactly what I was thinking with this album as well too I mean uh, from hearing the past material and loving it so much and then being able to hear this new material I it, just like you said it's like it's got the best of what you guys are known for and the fact that you guys were able to take such a bad situation that we're still still struggling with here in 2022 and making the best out of it with some of your best material to dates and really being able to dial everything in and make sure everything's the way that you want it to be. Every song is, uh, you don't feel like you missed out on anything or had to take out or put in anything because everything just came out the way that it was supposed to. And when you let that time happen, it makes for some amazing work. And that's what's shown off here. Oh, awesome, man. Thank you. Oh, not a problem. Yeah, we hope people like it. So we love it. Oh, I definitely do. And I've, I've been seeing some great reception for this so far. I mean, with the singles that's been released so far in the videos, just like it's it's so cool to see that our people are catching on with this and just really loving what you guys do. Yeah. Uh, the funny thing about the first single was it actually was about to get canned off the record like last minute. And we were just going to maybe release it on like another B-Sides record, whatever. And then uh, we decided to just kind of give it one more shot. And then once, you know, it got finalized, uh, we're like, dude, like, we think this could be the first single, actually. So it kind of worked out like in a really strange way. Yeah, it's amazing how that works because... You know, it's just when you have so much material to be able to use. I mean, sometimes it feels like it's going to work perfect on one album or, or other times it's a good song, but you want to be able to release it on a different release. But, you know, sometimes just letting things just be natural and happen like that, it can lead to great things. And I'm glad to see that happen with this. Yeah, it was awesome how it worked out. So, uh, what... You know, obviously, with uh, like what you just said, it, it might have been uh, saved for a B-Sides release later. I mean, what was it like to, to have it go from that to actually being the lead single? Uh, well, when we decided, when we are working on this record, usually if within sharing, you know, ideas, if we're both not really feeling it, we usually just can it right away. Like, well, at first listen, if we don't like it, like, we'll put it aside and move on. But this time around, we decided to really just you know literally like dig into every song until we're like you know what there's literally nothing else we can do with these songs um whether they make it or they don't so we had a different approach but um with sledge it was like man like there's some it's not fitting the record you know maybe we should just put it aside for now and um just having that you know promise we made with each other like well we decided not to can anything until we really really you know, really gave it a go. So uh, I think last minute we just popped it back open and we're like, you know, once we made those little changes, we're like, wow, like this just became like our favorite track. It was just really weird how it happened. Yeah, that's just incredible how things like that can happen too. And, you know, again, you know, just uh, being able to have that time 
because uh, you know it, it might have ended up on a different release had it not had that time to be able to actually get that uh, the focus in and making sure all the right parts are going the right way. So, yeah, yeah, it's just it, it's so strange, you know, in these strange times, you know, anything like that can happen. And I'm glad to see that the song is actually came out as the lead single. I mean, it's such a great song. I think it really shows you guys off. And for anyone that's checking out for the first time, I think it's a great in- introduction to the band. Oh, awesome. Thank you. It's awesome to hear. So, you know, thinking about that as well, too, I mean, was there anything else like like that, that that's happened where, you know, with uh, with the album this time around? I mean, was there anything that went through like any major changes or anything? Uh, I don't know, Justin. I mean, we. I mean, production wise, we pay more attention to productions. We were just learning so much more, you know, every every record we're evolving with skills uh, because we self-produce. So um, there was that, just like new techniques, you know, learning skills and, you know, approaching songs differently. But for the most part, I think we wanted to represent the three main things that make us, you know, who we are, which is huge sounding drums, uh, big, heavy guitar riffs and huge synths. And I think, you know, to, to my knowledge, we did the best we can and capture that. So, oh yeah, that and that's just so cool too. And you know, I can't I can't help but uh, admire the guitar setups that you got going on uh, behind you. I mean, it, it looks like you have an amazing collection behind you. Oh, yeah. I mean, I should probably stop. Same with Justin, but it just keeps growing. <laughs> Oh, th- th- there's no stopping when you're a musician. I mean, yeah. even, even if it's, even if you don't pick up new guitars, like you're picking up pedals, you're picking up amps, you're picking up preamps, you're picking up uh, different tones if you're doing online work. I mean, there's, there's so much that goes into it. And there's so much new cool stuff that comes out. There was a, oh, yeah. a pandemic caused me anyways, to just like kind of get bored and buy stuff gear I didn't need. So now this year, I'm actually trying to get rid of stuff I bought in the last year. Just bought too much stuff that didn't need. <laughs> oh yeah i know i know what that's like too uh being being a drummer myself like i'm i'm so used to like uh, trying out different drum heads or cymbals or sticks like i i can go like into an overabundance of buying things just to try things out and then i'm left over with a bunch of stuff that i might never use again so i totally understand that yeah and you know another great thing i I really do appreciate about you guys is, you know, obviously so much work goes into the production and the songwriting and making sure everything goes right to make for the best songs possible audibly. But visually, I love what you guys do as well, too. And there's no finer example of that than with the album cover this time around. I think it just perfectly captures the album and just gives that great aesthetic of as someone who appreciates the work that you do and what you guys love. I really love seeing that as an album cover. Well, when we were kids, uh, like there, you know, there was like blockbuster videos and VHS rentals. And I was always fascinated by like the horror and sci-fi section, like the video covers, like the cover would make me want to watch the movie, even if the movie sucked. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, I've always been a big fan of like the artwork on any kind of, like whether it's movie or, or band stuff. And um, we- Yeah, even like when we're growing up, you know, when we see like, uh, you know, when we're like, I don't know, Back when we were like seven or eight, you see the Iron Maiden cover, you're like, dude, what is that? Like, you know, it just draws you into like, what is that? Or Megadeth. They just kind of pop and you, you just kind of like that curiosity kicks in. Like, okay, I don't know what band or style of music this is, but I definitely want to check this out because the cover looks so cool. I think the artwork is, is really important for any artist because it's an extension of your art. So yeah, we take the artwork very serious. So yeah, we're super stoked with the new driven to madness cover probably my favorite of ours so far yeah i i think it is becoming my favorite as well too i mean just the the way that everything looks on it uh the use of colors with it uh the the fact that the band name stands out so well and then it matches or um you know it's yeah just like it matches so well with everything else that's going along with it and it just has that great horror vibe behind it like i want to see the movie that this this comes from yeah, so would we, so do we. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. There could be a movie made off that cover for sure. That's oh. kind of like the direction we took with our music video for Sledge. Yeah, we kind of just uh, we talked to the the production company, the director, and we're like, well, just 
off of our album cover. Just let's let's make a story off that. So, and I think they nailed it. So, oh, I absolutely agree, and I I love the fact that it does uh, take that part of it too. And you know, it's just like there's so many songs I could have that uh, great uh, video. Uh, representation along with it as well too and i'm glad to see again that sledge was able to get that representation for the album cover yeah it, it actually worked out like perfect the way we had it envisioned in our head it was just like kind of cool to like really come to see it live come to life oh for sure and you know again you know it's it, I mean, there's so much to love about this album, uh, the diversity that's going along with it. It's so energetic and full of life, despite it being, you know, just like a filled with a lot of death feeling behind it. You know, obviously with the horror representation, it's great to see that life behind it, too. And the fact that you got some new life a part of it as well, too. I mean, the, the fact that you got two amazing musicians that just so happen to be related to each other uh, with the Carpenters. I mean, it's just, it's so great to see that you were able to get them a part of this album as well. Yeah, that was like, I, so to backtrack. So we've been Cody with friends with Cody Carpenter for a few years now. Um, um, and he, we, we actually almost ended up doing like an EP with him a couple years ago. Uh, where Which we could just call him. Never know. Um, yeah, but so we reached out to him because he's an amazing uh, keyboardist. So we're like, hey, like, would you want to do a cameo and, uh, you know, play some cool, like, creepy synth stuff for our next record? And he was like, yeah, absolutely. Send me the track. And then I was like, oh, hey, like, while we're on that topic, like, what would it, you know, what, what are the possibilities of getting your father to do like a narrative? And he's like, oh, I don't know. And I think they were wrapping up on um, Halloween Kills. I know they were pretty slammed uh, with their schedule, but when he got back, it was like, yeah, my dad's down to do it. Like, I, I called Justin, like, just speechless, like, our jaws dropped, like, wow. Like, we just got John Carpenter on here. Like, yeah. Yeah, I the fact that you guys were able to pull that off is just tremendous. I mean, obviously, with all the work that he's been able to do, um, you know, whether it's visually for him too, or the amazing music that he's been able to create as well. I mean, the fact that you were able to get him to basically start off this album and get both of them to be able to really get that great impact intro for the album, and then it eventually kicks in. It's just such a great segue. Yeah, it, it, honestly, like with this record, like it, it just everything just worked out so well. Like everything that we had in our mind, and it's just it's great to finally uh get everything together and you know have it released in the package the way we always wanted to have it done so it just yeah it worked out so good oh definitely and one thing that i really do love about this album is uh, so much how, how it does flow together in the album sense and i can tell you guys care so much about like the the track list order and how everything goes together with that it's just uh also hearing these songs and just picturing how they're going to sound in that live setting and i'm glad to see it at, at least of now the tour dates are still going on and hopefully the tour will be able to go through and just be able to get that live representation of these new songs live yeah well a we're aching to play because it's been it's been it's been a minute and yeah just every time we get to play new material it's always you know it's always fun so uh, refreshing so yeah i mean fingers crossed that you know nothing nothing gets in the way oh definitely and you know you know along with that too i mean the fact that you guys have been a part of so many great tours in the past too and really being able to build up your name in that live sense i i, I love the fact that you guys are able to put out such killer albums and be able to go out and have such a great tours and being able to, whether you're headlining, whether you're opening, whatever the case is, it always feels like you guys know how to put together such a great set to be able to bring a great night for everybody. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, what was the big one we did, Justin? It was with uh, Avatar and Devin Townsend. We were, we were pretty frightened because obviously those names alone are, you know, household names and we didn't really know how people were gonna react to our music just two dudes up there at the time before we had the live drummer but um it just we got great feedback from everyone um so it was awesome and that's when we knew that we could uh, go out you know with bands like dragon force and stuff like that and you know 
and survive. <laughs> and, you know, thinking about that as well, too, I mean, obviously with you guys putting in so much into the songwriting and really making this band your own, I mean, when you make a decision like that to uh, include a, a live drummer in the sense, I mean, what is that like for you to be able to go from like, uh, the, you know, like the drum machines and program drums to having a real drummer behind you? Whole nother level of different kind of vibe and energy for the better. Like I don't ever want to go back to not ever having a, a drummer. <laughs> so it just, it feels, it just feels more organic on stage. It's easier yeah. for us to like, get, you know, rock out and get into the music. Fun fact for everyone, Justin actually is a drummer. So there were talks about maybe Justin playing drums. And he's like, I don't know, man. I haven't played drums in a while, blah, blah, blah. So once we did decide to get a live drummer and we had that first rehearsal, it's, yeah, it's just like it finally felt like a band. And especially in a live setting where you, there's that extra energy on stage and, you know, the loud sound of the banging drums. Yeah, it's just a game changer. It just changed everything. So. Um, I can't see us ever doing it the other way again. Yeah, I highly doubt we'll ever perform again without a, a live drummer, so. Oh, yeah, and you know, unfortunately, I haven't been able to see you guys uh, with him playing behind the kit yet. So I've, I've seen you guys when uh, it was without the live drum, so I'm so excited for the opportunity to be able to see you guys in that live setting. I think that's just gonna be so cool. Yeah, we're, we're super excited, super, super excited. Yeah. And, you know, again, you know, just hopefully everything goes in that right direction because it feels like you guys have such an amazing tour coming up. And now that you got so much material to be able to play behind, you know, being able to show off the new album, being able to show off the past material. And of course, uh, with uh, being sidelined and not being able to play live for so long, that first time you, you're able to get back live on stage and hit into that first song is going to, I can only imagine how cathartic that feeling is going to be. Yeah, it's yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be a good one. <laughs> oh, awesome! So you know, thinking about the uh, things as well too, like uh, uh, of course I've uh, mentioned a few times now about like Sledge potentially not being on the album. Was there any other material that uh, might show up in the future uh, from this recording process? Um, well, the track Hex on the record that was supposed to be on Blackout, but that got canned. And then we, we, you know, revisited the song and we were like, dude, what were we thinking? This is a great track. So, yeah, I mean, when, when a song with us doesn't make it onto a record, we don't completely can it. We just kind of like put it aside and then kind of revisit all these later when we're, you know, working on a new album or whatnot. And um, sometimes we realize we made a big mistake by not adding it or, you know, realize it was probably for the best not to add it. So, um I don't know how many tracks in total we had. Justin, do you remember for Driven to Madness? I think at one point it was like 15. Yeah, maybe. I think so. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot. So there was a few that didn't obviously make it, but um, we also wanted to keep it, you know, straight to the point rather than having like a really long record. So um, yeah. yeah, sometimes we try to keep our records like a, a cohesive like unit. So sometimes we'll write a song and it just doesn't make sense to be on that record. So we'll put it aside. And that's why we, we release uh, B-side records. It's just kind of the material that's like, you know, a little out maybe off out there. And, but we can still get it out and, and people seem to enjoy it. So we do have a volume two of that coming, hopefully within the next year and a half. Oh, that's so cool. I'm definitely going to be looking forward to that. But um, yeah, just like, just like uh, you said, and uh, I mentioned it before too, like uh, th this album in particular, I mean, it does feel like a great full album from start to finish with the ebb and flow that's going on throughout it. And it's such an important thing when you do appreciate albums rather than just like throwing everything together and releasing it as a collection. You know, some songs uh, feel better off to the wayside some fit together to fit the mold of an album and you really want to be able to have that great feel behind it as well too and i definitely feel that with this album i mean it feels like every song that's on there is meant to be on there and it just makes for that great experience to listen from start to finish yeah that's, that's yeah. awesome to hear thank you oh absolutely and 
again, I mean, that's what I really do appreciate about you guys, you know, just paying so much attention to the production, the songwriting, uh, visually everything that's going on. I can imagine with the live shows, I mean, like uh, with the ideas that you got going on for finally being able to get back on stage again, you know, it's, I'm glad to see everything is going in that right direction right now. And, you know, again, with hopefully with the world still being able to make things happen and being able to finally get that release of being able to play live shows and just having that inspiration again of being able to go out and play these new songs for so many people. Yeah, it, 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 we, we definitely need it because after, what is it? I mean, we've been, we've been touring pretty straight for, I want to say four years straight and all of a sudden to have two years off and, you know, speaking for everyone else in the industry too, not just us, but it's, it's not a good feeling. You start feeling strange and lost. It's been two years not playing. Our drummer lives in Chicago and, you know, our sound guy, he's a good friend of us. He lives in Chicago. Tony lives in California. I live in Washington. So not only have we not played, like in the last like two years, we really haven't even barely seen each other at all in person. So yeah. it's just kind of a, a, like a bummer. We're just ready to get going. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I can only imagine. And, you know, that's one of the great things, you know, about like, you know, like using Zoom here, for example, you know, just like being able to see each other. And I imagine with you guys as well, too, just uh, being able to see each other on the screen and, you know, knowing so many great things are going to be uh, coming up in the future and being able to get together to uh, rehearse or at least go over ideas of everything. I mean, that's that stuff is so important. And the fact that we got that technology to be able to do that, it, it really helps with life. Oh, yeah, it's been great. Oh, for sure. And, you know, think, thinking about that as well, too, I mean, obviously with how far technology has come as well, too, I mean, and especially with uh, being able to go through your guys' discography and especially with this album and just hearing, like, you know, the, the production being so stellar on this album. Uh, you, you mentioned before, like, how much work was going into the production. I mean, what was what was that like for you to, like, really get engaged with uh, making sure that the production was going to be the way that you wanted to? It was annoying. Um, <laughs> I mean, I there were mixes where they were probably fine the way they were, but, like, I mean, Justin and I would just nitpick to even, like, dude, that symbol, that needs to come down, like, 3D. You know what I mean? Like, just until it was like perfection to our ears that most people wouldn't even notice. Uh, we just wanted to make sure to us, more importantly, that it was the most perfect it could be. So yeah, we spent a lot of time just, you know, just remixing, changing things and just until it was, you know, the best it can be. So it got quite annoying uh, after a while because it was like, dude, let's, this thing sounds high now in the car or too low. And, you know, just having to redo it and bounce it back out. And it's, it's a process, but um, obviously it worked out for the best. So, Oh, totally. So thinking about that, uh, was there like a moment where everything like started to make sense and unlock and like the production was going in that right direction? Or, or was it kind of like a fight till the end, making sure that you got everything the way you wanted to? I think for me that, I mean, we were writing songs for like the last year, but when our artist uh, delivered the first draft of the cover, that's when everything locked into me. And then like, okay, now it's a theme, now it's a concept, now it's a story to be told. And that's for the, the that was my moment when I was like, okay, this record as a whole is just gonna work uh, is when I, when I saw the cover. Cause it just kind of, everything came to life. Um, for me, usually when I send Justin ideas, I'll get two answers back. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really cool. Or, <laughs> Or he would say, like, oh, it's really cool. I'm digging it. Or he would be like, holy crap, dude, like the chorus. <laughs> when I get that holy crap, it kind of gives me that extra boost to like, okay, if he's feeling that way, then it kind of, you know, boosts me up to be like, okay, I could make the song even better, you know? So that's kind of where we're like, or vice versa, you know? If he sends me something and I'm like, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then, you know, usually it would just be like, you yeah, know, I mean, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But if same way with me, if it's like, holy crap, dude, like there's something in the song, then I think that song gets written a lot faster and kind of writes itself than other ones, you know, we're really struggling to make it work. So I guess it's just vibing off energy with each other. Oh, that totally makes sense. And yeah, I think that's one of your guys' strong points. And I think it's just shown off so very well on this album is the transitions 
in, in the riffs. I mean, when you can hear something go from like the verse to the chorus and just like hearing that change and hearing how glorious some courses really are on this album. I mean, it really does have those great moments behind it, but, you know, just making sure that the whole song has that great ebb and flow to it and makes you want to listen from start to finish. I mean, you guys nail that so well. And when you can have something like that, that high chorus that really just brings everything in, it's just such a great feeling. Um, yeah, for us, we don't have a vocalist, so we have to somehow tell a story with our instruments. Um, so it's really a key thing in, in our writing to at least when, when the chorus drops, it really does sing, you know what I mean? So um, every time any song we're working on, um, I think the first, the main thing for us is like the chorus has to sound huge. Oh, absolutely. And of course, in that live setting too, I mean, when those choruses hit, like when I've seen you guys, like it, it grabs people in that live setting. And that's just such a cool feeling, especially when you don't have a vocalist and you're able to grab people that, you know, it's just like, they might listen to some kind of music like that, but they're like expecting some vocals to be able to sing along to. If you can capture them with just the chorus riffs alone, that is just so cool, especially in that live setting. Yeah, I think there was, I think we were playing in France once and then we were playing one of our older songs and then um, all of a sudden we heard the entire crowd like chanting the synth line. And I, I just, I just couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, like we don't have lyrics. There's like no like singable melody, but like they're literally singing the, the synth parts. It was kind of crazy. Oh, that, that is so cool. And it, it shows that they are paying attention as well, too. And they really are engaged with what you do. And, you know, it just goes back to the really the strength of the band. I mean, with the quality of songs, the quality of uh, the production that's going on, especially with this album, I love what you guys are doing with that. And, of course, visually, everything that's going along there as well, too. I mean, it really feels like right now in 2022, you guys are just firing on all cylinders and it's so great to see this album's coming out next week and i'm just so happy to be able to promote it and talk to you guys and get your guys's insights into all this I, i've just had an amazing time and i thank both of you guys so much for taking time to be able to talk about all of it oh yeah thanks for having us man uh, thank you for having us man oh not a problem uh before we wrap things up is there anything else you'd like to mention that i hadn't brought up yet uh well, we have that tour coming up in uh, March, so um, get your tickets. You could get the link on our socials. Come out, see us, hear the new jams. Yeah, it's gonna, we're going to put on a pretty good show for people. <laughs>